Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I don't remember what day of the week it is. I think it's Thursday. Yes, it's Thursday. Happy Thursday. So this morning, I would like to talk about, I mean, day four, because I mess up a couple days, yes. Um, what is the main problem with being a carnal Christian? And these are a little longer because it's hard to break them up. And um, I'm trying to do that, but it's difficult to find the right part to break it and to come back and finish it up um, in record time. So let me not talk. So when we compare the early church with the present day church, we observe that the early church must have been predominantly made up of spiritual people. The book of Acts shows that this was the reason for their quick and positive development. And it tells you that the Holy Spirit came upon them. So they constantly had the Holy Spirit in their presence and they prayed for the Holy Spirit and they had no other aid, but they had the Holy Spirit. And he was evident and excellent aid in the abundance of how the church grew. But we have a deficiency of the Holy Spirit. And we see our churches are being turned into pubs and into homes and into theaters and all sorts of shops and buildings because there's a deficiency of the Holy Spirit in our church. Remember um, what A.W. Tozer said, if the Holy Spirit were taken away from our church today, 95% of what we do would continue and no one would notice the difference, except that members are leaving and our young people are leaving. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the early church, then 95%, this means almost everything of what they were doing would have stopped and everyone would have noticed the difference. Can you imagine? So if we have the Holy Spirit, do we really have the Holy Spirit in our church? today? Is a question. Have we learned to get along without the Holy Spirit? Does the church today consist primarily of carnal Christians is the question. As a consequence, we're often powerless and to a large extent without victories in spiritual matters. And we, we become so complacent that people say, ah, oh, there's no healing in the last days. Jesus is going to come. There's going to be false prophet. But God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And it doesn't mean that he won't be healing his people. It might just mean that the church is just filled with carnal Christians. And we lack the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Does a carnal attitude have something to do with the fact that we only have weak church growth in many places? Do many of us see the serious problems in many areas comes from carnal attitude that we have. And we can see evident carnal attitude in the church. We will notice more and more that personally and collectively, our central problem is a lack of the Holy Spirit. We, we give God mediocre work, basic stuff. And we find that, okay, we fail to plan and invite the Holy Spirit in. And we expect to reap abundantly with our minimal effort as if we're just saying, God, I'm appeasing you. I'm starting something, I'm doing something, and we don't put the effort in to get the result that we're supposed to get. It's not about us. In the personal area, we can quickly change this with God's help. The following statement made from ministers naturally applies to everyone. Jones Megas says, Paul differentiates between spiritual and carnal Christians, between those who are filled with the Holy Spirit and those who have no room for the Holy Spirit in their lives baptized with the Holy Spirit, but not filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of our lives are filled with too many other stuff, except the one thing we need to make all the difference we need in our lives. And I'm gonna, but what does this really mean for the Christian and for the speaker, the minister who leads the flock? For a minister, this means that I can have some theological training, be well-versed in the basic, biblical languages, and to be able to skillfully exegete a passage to the precise precision, I can have received the great biblical truths intellectually and understand them and be confident in the dogmatic theology of different centuries. I can have a sound grasp of homiletics and preach relevant and realistic sermons, yet despite all my knowledge and talents, I can be devoid of the Holy Spirit. And what is going on in churches is charisma. Conferences and, and, and people who are looking for speakers and pastors are looking for pastors who can have the charisma, the preaching style that they are looking for. They're not looking for the Holy Spirit in a person and a person who's going to live right. They don't care if the minister is going to sleep to the church as long as he can preach the preach and walk the walk. Well, most of them talk the talk, but don't walk the walk the walk. 
and walk after what they talk. So we lack spiritual insight. So the leaders who are leading lack the Holy Spirit and the wisdom to choose and guide. It's no wonder the flock are sleeping and going astray. So it's not about who can expound um, prophecy. It's about who can live the life that God is expecting and who has the power of the Holy Spirit. When they come to career fairs and ministerial um, session, they don't look for people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. They look for people who look the look and talk the talk. They don't care as long as you can swag a sermon that fits their, what they're looking for. That's okay. When we're choosing leaders for offices, we do the same thing. People who have PhDs, people who have this and have that. We're not looking for a person or a minister who's filled with the Holy Spirit, which is what we need. No wonder our churches are not even growing. We're doing stuff for the community, but we're not turning those stuff over into souls for the kingdom. It's the Holy Spirit that brings the increase for the New Testament church, my friends. They walk the walk and talk the talk and walk after what they talk. They were filled with the spirit and it says daily thousands were added to the church. So if we are doing the same thing and we're filled with the spirit, it doesn't matter how secular our world is, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it will move because it's not us and our suave and our, our compassionate um, or anything we have that, the, that God has given us that's going to bring the increase. And I tell people, don't give me a number of souls to reach. Don't tell me about being a Bible worker or getting um, X amount of souls to get my salary. I am not the Holy Spirit and I have no intention of being the Holy Spirit. I have intention of inviting the Holy Spirit in and to do my best by surrendering to God and allow him to bring the increase. Because if we have more leaders who do that, we will have more increase. And it doesn't mean that when you preach a word and the people did not respond, there were times that Jesus had to dust his feet off and move on. But yet people get promotion by the number of people they baptize. And that's what people look for when they're looking for a minister. Yes, you want somebody who's going to work. But, and even leaders in the church, but that's not all. The person, and that shows that we lack Holy Spirit in our lives because we lack discernment in our choosing. We're, we're not looking for charisma, as I said. I can have a good sound grasp of politics and preach sermons and be realistic in my sermons and be, be, be relevant to the, the culture. Yet despite all my knowledge and talents, too many of us are running on talent. I can be devoid of the Holy Spirit. Books, education, good technical equipments, learning all the preaching style and techniques and even charisma from a substitute for the missing Holy Spirit led life is what we are seeing in church. Have you gone to church and a praise team singing and you just feel flat? People are dancing and saying, what's wrong with you? Yeah, it's not about dancing and moving. It's about being led into worship with God. Yeah, and they look at you as if, what are you talking about? Yeah, this is something lacking. You, you come to give your praise and it's just flat. It's not about a feel good factor. It's about having the Holy Spirit in your life. And when you come to church, have you ever listened to a sermon? You're trying, you're trying hard. I'm like, okay, God, I put it on to me. It's me. It's me who is not holy. It's me who, you know, failed to connect. And I'm like, I don't get anything from that. I mean, I hear him, but he didn't touch me. He didn't convict me. I should be convicted by everything, by anybody. So some of it is down to my lack of spirituality, I guess. But some of it is not anything to do with me. It's the lack of the person who has been charismatic. I mean, there's some people who jump out of the place and it's just the natural self, but you know they're connected to the spirit. And then there's the next person preaching and carrying on and I'm like, this is like a show. I didn't come here for a show. I come here to be connected to Christ. For me, I don't care if you're just talking softly. As long as you got my attention, I'm good. So when you're connected to the Holy Spirit, whether you're giving a big wuvula, which is natural, because that's just who you are, or whether you're just talking like a teacher or just talking so to put me to bed, when you're connected to the spirit, you will grab the attention of the people. Some people are good at it naturally. Doesn't mean that you're filled with spirit. I'm just saying, be careful of who you're following. You're supposed to be following God and not preachers. I know we all do it, yeah. Preaching, praying publicly, organizing church life. Now, I would follow a good preacher if he feeds my soul. I will do that. I do that. Because I'm not going to go to church and not get nothing of the message. I'm going to go where I can get beef, beef get fed. And I've, trust me, I've been to churches where I get nothing week after week, months after months. 
organizing church life, preparing evangelistic programs, all of that is good. Giving pastoral counseling, these all can be learned and also put into practice without the Holy Spirit. And that's what we do. We have a campaign and it's just a couple, a month before we go into the community. We're having a program, it's a, a couple of days before we go into the community. That is not what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be praying and seeking the Holy Spirit months before, months before working, Oftentimes what we reap is not what we planted, it's what somebody has sold. So there are different stages to the evangelistic process. There's a clearing of the ground. There's the, 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 you know, watering it and tilling it up and turning it over. And there's the planting. And then there's the Holy Spirit doing its work in their lives, nurturing. And then there comes the harvest, yeah. But oftentimes we're reaping and we never planted. Yeah, preaching, praying publicly, to summarize it, being carnal means, I think I'm gonna stop here because I went way over the tangent with that. Being carnal means living by normal human powers and abilities without the Holy Spirit or an insufficient quantity of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm gonna do one more. What is the main obstacle in carnal Christianity? The great ethics of the Bible, loving your enemy, forgiving people for everything, overcoming sin, etc., can only be achieved by the power of the Holy Spirit not with human effort. This shows us that the main problem in carnal Christianity is that it is a life depending solely on human strength. What we can't do, God will surely, God's will in our own strength. Let's read a Bible verse on this topic. Isaiah 64 verse six tells us, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. And that's why I tell people be careful about this perfect. We're gonna be perfect before we leave your theology. Our perfect next comes through Jesus Christ because all our efforts, the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. All our righteousness and our efforts are like filthy rags. So don't pat yourself on the back. Oh, that was great. You can do nothing without Christ. It's the in Christ factor. And Christ said, I'm going to go away. I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me say focus. Jeremiah 13, verse 23. I can feel like I'm going to preach a sermon this morning. Can the Ethiopian change his skin and the leopard his spot? Then may you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. Ezekiel 26, verse 26, 27, says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. So we're supposed to be praying for the Holy Spirit, praying for the Holy Spirit and for God to put a new heart in us so we can keep his commandment because we cannot do it by ourselves. You're not supposed to keep it by yourself. That's why we do such a poor job of keeping the Sabbath because we're connected to the Holy Spirit. Romans 8 verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. The mind is governed by the flesh and is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. And that's how we have so much supplement Christians. They don't want to be transformed. They want to do as they please, live their life as the world does, waste themselves away on, on, on substances, and still say we are leading God's church. Lifestyle matters lifestyle matters you're supposed to look different from the world you should not look like the world how different are you from them why are you taking a cue from the world they tell you when to wear what when to dress what how to look what and they tell you what beauty looks like they tell you how big you're supposed to be how small you're supposed to be how much makeup you're supposed to put in your face they tell you everything and i watch the church members are going after that they tell you this is beauty yeah, as if God didn't do a good job as you're looking. I mean, the message we give says a lot. And I'm not telling people what to do with their lives because you have to be converted for yourself. But you've got to look different because God says you must be different. So why is God, daughters and sons, trying to look like the world when God has made you to look different? Ellen White said very clearly and accurately, he was trying to reach heaven by his own works, is keeping the law. It's a tempting and impossibility. Man cannot be saved without obedience, but his work should not be of himself. It was work of faith. Christ should work in him to will and to do of his good pleasure, which is what scripture says. I think these references show sufficiently that we are not capable of doing God's will without the Holy Spirit. We can do something, but it's just our own doing. Our main concern is that we always need to make a decision for God's will and that God gives us the strength to implement it. 
this understanding of the doctrine of righteousness by faith is extremely important and liberating. However, we can't discuss all of that. And we have done lessons previously on devotions on righteousness by faith. I'm not sure if I recorded those. I might have to revisit those again, but I have done in-depth studies on righteousness by faith, the in Christ motive, the in Christ factor. I wanna encourage us to pray daily for the Holy Spirit and to watch the difference it makes in your life. Are you feeling dead? Are you feeling that your life is static? Now, don't get me wrong. Having the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you're not going to have trouble. It just means that you have a different mindset and how you view what you are experiencing. Because if you mean Christ and you're not having trouble, something is wrong in your life. The devil isn't threatened by you. No, he's not. So if life is unkidori, and oftentimes as Christian, we get discouraged by the, I mean, some of the things are bad choices that we have made. Yes. And that's why we're having problems. But when you know you've surrendered to God and you're in God's will and you have surrendered your will to the Holy Spirit, you can embrace trouble when it comes, not by might, not by power, but by God's spirit. I want to encourage us to pray daily for the Holy Spirit, to invite the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts and to show us how to, and to help us to keep and be obedient and keep the laws of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you this morning. Father, forgive us, Lord, for where we have planned programs, done things in your name, and not invite you in. We have been perfunctory by just inviting you and asking you to bless the end result. God, we haven't asked you to show us what your people need. We haven't seek you and seek your guidance. We have just run with stuff, Lord, and expect you to bless them. God, I ask you to bless your feeble efforts and not let your people miss the opportunity to come to know you. We try to do a one size fits all mentality and recognize, not recognizing that people are different. We don't do use Jesus way. Jesus way and Jesus way alone will reach people. We don't have to compromise the gospel, but we don't reach everybody the same way because people are at different level in their lives. Father, we just want to ask you, God, to fill us with your spirit, to empty us of the self, of all the things that fill us up, because there's no scope or space in our lives for the Holy Spirit, because we have filled it with everything else. So God, we ask you to forgive us and to help us, Lord, that we will empty yourself, that you will empty us, strip out all the branches and the thorns in our lives that are preventing you from working in our lives. Strip out all the bad character and the traits, the things we have used to fill up our vessels, Lord. There's no space in there for you and the Spirit. There's no space in our lives for proper connection with you. We do the performing from it worships and we say a little quick prayer here and there and we, we spend a little time here and there with you and we, we do our Christian duty and get overly active, Lord, but have no connection with you and the Holy Spirit's power in our lives. The truth is, God, we're going to church like the, the five foolish virgin, Lord, and we have oil in our lamps, but we don't have any extra flowing power of the Holy Spirit. We know doctrine and we know theology and we know prophecy and we know the, 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 what, we, what they, we call the right arm of the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ and Jesus only. Yes, healthy living is important and amazing. But I preach nothing less but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh yes, I will preach healthy living, don't get me wrong. We use everything else to be our buffer in our lives, Lord. Everything except Christ and him crucified in his righteousness in our lives. We use our actions and our behaviors, Lord, to substitute God for not having a relationship with you. And the truth is, if we're honest enough to say we're empty, God, and to surrender our lives to you and to meet you at the foot washing table and ask you to baptize us in you, Lord, with power from an eye, fill us with your spirit, God. And, and Father, today I'm surrendering my hands, my feet, my mouth, and my whole being to be used by you. Father, use me as you see fit, Lord. Father, I pray just as you did with the early church, Lord, as you, Holy Spirit, just move from off them, Lord, and touch those who are around them, God. May as I walk, as I talk, as I commune, Lord, may your presence shine through me and shine through us today. May those in my connection, Lord, may those patients and those which I connect with today, those, those co-workers, whoever I connect with today, Lord, may they sense your presence. May they find hope and relief, not by my mind, not by my effort, not by my sinful presence, Lord, but by your power and your spirit. Father, move the stuff that is filling up my life. And God, fill us up now. 
Those who need traveling mercies, Lord, give them traveling mercy. Those who need your protection and your peace, God, protect us, Lord, because people are careless these days. And we put all our, our confidence in, in politicians who are liars and, 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 and in leaders who are leading the countries who, who tell us what they want to tell us, Lord, except putting our confidence in you. God, we follow what politicians say to the T and we, 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 we want to be free. And freedom comes from knowing who you are. We're enslaved, enslaved to ourselves and to wanting our own way and to being obstinate and stubborn, Lord. But we come asking you to forgive us and to put us back on track with you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bless, bless.